We're going to take this page right here and we're going to apply some of the typography skills that we've been learning in the last set of videos. By embracing flexibility, we're going to make this page work a little bit better across a variety of devices. Currently, the page acts responsively, but no breakpoints have been set. There is not consistent letting, and the line length could be problematic in some of the sections of within the page. Let's look at the HTML before we get started. The HTML consists of a section tag which wraps around all of the content that's on the page. There is an aside tag within the section tag and this contains the whale shark poem. It's just a series of paragraphs. Then there's an article tag which wraps around the additional content that's on the page. There's an image that appears within the first paragraph and then there's a series of paragraphs, h1s, h2s, and those are the main components of the HTML. Let's take a quick look at the starting CSS. Here I just have some basic styles, a universal selector. On the section tag I set the font, set an overall width, and center it horizontally and add a little bit of margin top and bottom. On the aside, I'm floating it to the right. I have a background color, a width of 25%. I have some padding and margin settings already specified. I am using REMS, which we'll be using in this lesson. Then there's an aside P tag, which has a font style of italic, a font family of Georgia. So this makes the text within the aside appear within a different font. And then the image just has a max width of 100%. It's also floated left and a padding on the right of 1M. We'll go ahead and add the additional font styles to this page so that we can tighten up the way the page looks and greatly improve the flow of the document. The first thing that we should add into our page is our meta tag that specifies the viewport's initial scale is set to 1. This is important because we want our page to work correctly on mobile devices. Remember without this, the scaling would default and have all the content just fit within the viewport no matter how large or small it is. So it would not work in a responsive manner even if we set up our media queries to do so. The next thing I'm going to incorporate into the page is I want to make a style on the HTML tag. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify the font size be set to 100%. I'm also going to set a default line height on everything of 1.5. So by default, most of the browsers are going to render the text at 16 pixels. That's the default font size. Using that as our baseline, a one and a half amount of line height will default on 16 pixel items anyways for to 24. So 24 is going to be the default setting for our baseline. What we're actually saying is let's multiply our font size of 16 pixels by one and a half to get a total height for the line, which will then be 24 pixels. If we subtract 16 from 24, we end up with 8. That's going to give us 4 pixels on the top and 4 pixels on the bottom. That's how our baseline line height will be calculated. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a rule for our H1. For the H1, we want the font size to be set to 40 pixels. So we're going to divide 40 pixels by 16 pixels, and that's going to give us our resulting size that we'll be applying with REMS. 40 divided by 16 is going to give us a value of 2.5. So we'll set the font size to 2.5 rems. I'm using the root m font size that we had discussed in a previous video so that all of the fonts will be based on the root size rather than on any nested styles. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a margin on the bottom and I've chosen to use 0.5 rems. This number is being generated by dividing 8 pixels, which is the amount that we have left over in our baseline, by 16. Let's just take a moment and talk about where we're getting this half of RAM from. Remember here I'm dividing 8 pixels into 16 to get the 0.5. Well, the reason that I chose to use 8 pixel is because of our baseline grid that we've established. In order to stay on my baseline grid, I'll have an additional 8 pixels left over. That's where I'm getting this margin bottom number from. I just wanted to point it out since it's a little bit different than other things that we've done. Let's set up the rule for the H2. The H2 size that we ultimately want is 32 pixels. 
I'll go ahead and divide 32 into 16, which is going to give me a total of 2. And for my line height, I want it to be a little bit less on the H2. I'm going to divide 24 pixels, which is our target line height, into 32. That's the font size, and that's going to give me the value for line height. Margin on the bottom for the H2 is going to be set to 1.5. The next thing that I want to apply styles to is going to be my H3. The font size that we want to use on H3 is 24 pixels. So 24 pixels divided by 16 is going to give us 1.5. We'll set the font size to 1.5 rems. The line height is going to be 24 pixels for the H3s. So if we divide 24 into 24, we get 1. And finally, the margin on the bottom is going to be 1.75 rems. Let's set some styles for the P tag. The target size for my paragraphs is going to be 16 pixels, so I'll just set the font size to 1 rem. My line height is going to be 24, so I'll divide 24 into 16. That gives me a value of 1.5. And, and then finally, for the margin on the bottom, I'm going to use a multiple of the baseline. A multiple of 24 pixels in this particular case. Let's multiply 16 by 1.5 that gives me 24. So the value for this particular rule is going to be 1.5 rems. If we save the styles that we've just made and go back into the browser and refresh our page, you can now see that the page looks a little bit better. If I grab a quick ruler and line up the baseline on the text, you can see that in both columns the text is lining up. This creates even though you don't see the lines, a really nice uniform alignment that continues throughout the page. This particular page does not have any media queries incorporated into it yet, so that's something that needs to be added. I'm going to challenge you to make some media queries and design the page so that it works well at a small as well as at a large size. There's obviously several different approaches you could use. I would recommend you practice by starting with mobile first and then build up to this size. So this is actually the full size. This is actually the full width display of our page looking the way we want it to display. On your own, go ahead and take this particular page and build a responsive layout. The page does flow and it works responsively, no horizontal scroll bars, but currently it's not optimized for, for optimal readability at a small size screen. These columns get way too narrow, there's some issues with the picture, so these things need to be resolved. You should have the tools to be able to go into this page and make some styles to solve this problem. Go ahead and do that on your own. Good luck!